Hi, Attorney Steve Vondren, the real estate lawyer. We are talking in this video about Donald Trump, eminent domain. This is a fact check. Get ready. This is politics seasons. Everybody's excited, wanting to know more about this eminent domain case with the Donald. The Donald. All right, let's get to the real estate whiteboard here. Let's back it up. We are talking eminent domain in this case. Okay, we've talked about this in other videos. Eminent domain is very simple. The government or a governmental authority has the power to take real property, to take your property as long as it's put to a public use. There has to be a legitimate public use and you, you as the owner has to get just compensation, which means fair compensation, fair market value at the time of the taking, okay? So yes, this can be done. Yes, this is legal. Yes, um, the public, the, um, the state agencies in, in Arizona, like the um, APS, SRP, Department of Transportation, a city, a county, the state can take land. It is legal. But under the Constitution, which is the Fifth Amendment, applicable with the 14th Amendment to the states, the, the government can take property. Why? They build rid, bro, uh, ridge, bro, bridges, roads. Uh, highways, they do redevelopment projects that benefit the public, create jobs and things like that. So there's a lot of different reasons why a governmental entity would take your property. So this is what this case is about and we're going to fact check it. I'm going to give you the information that I found off the internet. I know be careful what you find, but most of it comes from Wikipedia. So check fact check your own sources uh, to follow up anything I have here but these are the general facts that I found in the Trump versus Coking case so um, Miss Coking was an elderly lady who had purchased this property hopefully you can see this this is a 29 room boarding house that she purchased in 1961 for twenty thousand dollars she purchased it for twenty thousand dollars probably a pretty good deal back in the days but it was a boarding room house. Um, next to this was eventually came the legalization of casinos out in Atlantic City. This, this takes place in Atlantic City. So the casinos were later approved and then you had developers coming in wanting to basically um, put casinos up and develop out in this area next to her house, which is down here on Columbia Place, 127 Columbia Place. So she was a, I don't know if she was elderly in 1961, she was probably, you know, um, I'm not going to speculate, but she wasn't quite uh, elderly. Um, but th this deal took place in about 1998, so that was, you know, almost 20 years ago. So, but anyway, so she owned this property here, and... The first developer came in, once gambling was legalized, the owner of Penthouse, Penthouse, um, wanted to come in and build the Penthouse Gaming Casino. So he came in, Bob Guccione was his name, he wanted to put up a casino. Um, so he approached Miss Coking and he had offered her a million dollars. And she said, no, that's not enough. Um, you know, she wanted $3 million, according to what I was able to read. She wanted $3 million, so the deal didn't go down. Nevertheless, um, Guccione built the casino around and basically was building it up around her house. So there were some issues in between there, some back and forth battles, and you know, I think there was a, a couple intermediate skirmishes. But at any rate, it was kind of a contentious development. You know, here you have your your boarding house here and then the casino wants to come here you can see the the close proximity and, and probably some of the issues that would arise so she didn't sell the house Trump later comes in he purchases the properties after it failed with Guccione ran out of money and the basically got the community redevelopment the casino uh, reinvestment authority involved and they eventually came and offered her they initiated eminent domain, okay? They initiated the action. Now, in these actions, the the city is usually the plaintiff and then the homeowner, the property owner, in this place, um, sort of a commercial property, gets, gets to be the defendant. So it's kind of a little bit different, but it's a suit to take 
your property. The condemning authority says, I want the property. And so they come in and try to get it. The appraised value that they came up with at that time was around 251. So more than the 20,000 that she had purchases for, but less than the 3 million she wanted less than you know the, the that kind that kind of amount she was looking for so there was a battle so she challenged it she raised her defenses i believe she got a um, eminent domain justice organization involved in her defense and they successfully defeated the suit and basically the way they did it is you know it it sounded like from what i read that trump wouldn't give the proper guarantees that this property would be used for the pur purpose that it was stated. And he stated he wanted to use it for a park. He said he wanted to have a park portion and a place to park his limousines. So those were the public purposes that he was alleging, but apparently there were not enough concrete guarantees and the judge didn't want to give him a blank check to do whatever he wanted. In other words, to expand his casino or do whatever he wanted to do. So. Based on that, there was questions about whether this was a proper public use, whether this was being put to the proper public use. And based on that, the judge denied it and said, you know, this is not a proper exercising of the eminent domain authority. So in that sense, Ms. Koking, she won the court battle. Um, the Trump and the uh, Redevelopment Association decided not to appeal, and that pretty much ended the battle, okay? So afterwards, um, she had eventually, um, I don't know if she ran into financial problems, but she had eventually moved out in about 2010, from what I was able to gather. Um, their, their family later put the, the property on the market. I think they were asking about $5 million, so that's quite a significant difference over the 20000 It later was came down, I believe, to a million or so, but eventually they didn't sell it. So at the end of the day, it had to be sold through an auction, and it was sold for approximately 530000 from what I was able to gather and that was in July of 2014. So afterwards, the house was eventually demolished. So the house was gone. The Trump Plaza eventually closed, and that pretty much closed the whole saga behind this eminent domain case. So that's the best I'm able to come up with. Please, sir, you know, check, check out my sources, if you will. But that's the best I was able to put together. So hopefully that's helpful and gives you a little information about the power of eminent domain, sometimes it wins, sometimes it loses. Um, one thing that was discussed was the Kelo decision, Kelo versus City of New London, which was a big eminent domain case, which authorized the concept of transferring private property to another private property owner if there was a significant public use. So a lot of those issues, if you're interested in this area, um, check out our website, ArizonaEminentDomain.com. That's ArizonaEminentDomain.com. Or look up the Kelo decision, which is a, you know, one of the big important decisions in the area of eminent domain. Okay, Attorney Steve Honor, hope you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. Click on that red V. We'd like to get you some more legal updates as they come on out. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.